Hello everybody, thanks for joining me. So you saw the previews, and basically I'm going to show you how you can animate still pictures, bring them to life. And also, because I get a lot of requests regarding uh, depth of field, I'll show you a very simple way to create depth of fields in your images. So um, here's an image of the car that, I, uh, that you saw in the preview, and then I just brought some animation to it. So... There's two ways you can do it, and I'll show you the first step, and that's including using Photoshop. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, very simple. You just trace out the car, which will eventually leave you with this. Uh, if you've seen my other video, I think it's my very first or second video I did. It shows you how to embed any object or picture. Basically, have a look at that, and I'll teach you how to do that. If not, just I'll quickly tell you what to do here. Once you have finished with this, Go File, Save for Web, and save it in a PNG 24 format. And that, that will allow you the alpha channel. But like I said, I've done that already uh, in another tutorial. Just have a look through that. So let's go back into Video Studio. So you import both pictures, one that you have original, and the Photoshop picture, which is the one that you cut out. And this is one here. As you can see, it's got the white border around it, but because it's a PNG 24 Look what happens when I release it. It immediately goes into an alpha channel. I don't even have to apply a chroma key, nothing to it. And just fit to the same size as the original picture, like so. So there you go, very simple. Now all you need to do is add any filter or transitions you want to your main track. So let's just uh, let's try and create the... What am I looking at? I'm completely lost for words here. Uh, depth of field, there you go. I need coffee. <laughs> I need some coffee. All right, so you go into your FX filters and you just look for your blur. There's my blur filter here. And voila. Now I can create a blur effect to the trees to the back and make the car basically stand out. And unfortunately, I don't really like this blur filter. And if I go into the custom filter, it doesn't really give me a lot to work with as well. So that's, that's about as far as I can push the blur on this one. But don't panic, I'll show you an, an easier way to do this as well. All right, so let's go into the project. So now you can see that the background is blurred out and the overlay track stays nice and crisp. It almost, almost makes it look like a little toy car, doesn't it? And there you go. So that's how we create a depth of field. And you could probably, uh, where would you apply these sort of things? Well, you could use, uh, if you've got a lot of still images and you want to use the uh, Insta Project templates, you could probably add some really nice animating. Well, that certainly isn't very nice and animating, isn't it? Let's try that one. All right, so you've got... Uh, pictures you can put in here. Now wouldn't it be nice that not only is the background being animated, as you can see it all moves, that you can in, uh, import little photos in here and have them animated like the little card, a 3D, 3D uh, blur effect. But let's be honest, uh, templates are a bit like Google+. Plus. Nobody actually uses them. <laughs> all right, so, but like I said, this is the one that uh, I showed you in the preview. As you can see, it changes color in the background and there you go so you that's how you can add it now you're probably saying damn it Crips you're always using Photoshop and no, I don't have Photoshop or I don't know how to use Photoshop and I'm too lazy to use Photoshop well do not panic do not panic uh, let's say you want to grab this photo and want to do the exact same uh, effect this is your workmates and you want to do a demo for your company and you want to emphasize this fella here how can we do that just by using Corral Video Studio? Well, not a problem. Let's clear out the timelines. Let's grab that photo, shall we? Uh, well, I'll show you what I did here. I'm gonna, I'll teach you how to create this effect. So here's the gentleman right up the front. Everybody's grayed out at the back, as you saw in my preview. And then he uh, somehow pen and zooms in and out. That's kind of cool. How did I do this effect? Very simple. Let's grab our photo. Let's just add a couple of seconds to it. Four seconds is fine. Go FX. Grab your Boris filter. Double click. Go straight into your customers filter. Go straight to your interface and just get rid of that. All right. First thing we need to do is we need to bring uh, another photo, an exact photo of what it is here. 
So we go into our text track and we change that to an image file. So I go still image and look for the exact same photo again. So let's grab business people playing. All right, so now you've literally got this two of the identical photos. Let's just uh, resize that to be the same as the photo underneath. So now you've got two photos identical. So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, basically mask this gentleman out here. Let me get rid of that G on his nose. Uh, mask out this photo here. How is this possible with uh, Corral Video? Uh, yeah, well, Corral Video. We can do that in Boris because Boris allows you to also mask out objects. So we go down here into our panel and we add a spline media. So there you go. This now creates a mask track. Your, if it's not already open, your tool menu comes up and here it is your pen tool. And now what I do, I just double click on the actual frame here, opens it up in a large size. Using my mouse wheel I can scroll in. And then I'm just going to trace this gentleman out. And I'm just going to put the little nodes around here, very similar to Photoshop. As you can see. All right, now seeing it's how it's really filling out this gentleman. Now later on, this is going to cause a problem because you can't see what's going on. And I'll show you how we can get around that. So it's really, really starting to annoy me. So let's get back out, double click back here, and I'm just going to turn off my path. So voila, instantly gone. Let's go back. All right, and let's just continue on our path. Now to do that, uh, see how it's red and I highlighted that it goes yellow. Hold down your Alt key. Oh, sorry. There you go and hold down the Alt key and then you can just continue as normal. So make sure you use your Alt key and if you want to use a I think they call it a Bezier node hold down and pull and you can then add some curves to these nodes. I'll show that again over here slightly. So I want to make a bit of a curve here. I'm going to hold down and I can then add some curves to it. And I'm just going to keep going. Move that over there a bit. There we go. We're just about done. All right, so now we have masked this gentleman out. Let's go back over here and let's have a look. Let's see if he's, uh, sorry about this. I need to get to my spline track. Here we go. And there you go. So he's definitely masked out. And it's very simple. What I need to do now is just add the spline track to my first track. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, let's just close this. And we're going to put this spline track here onto our mask track. So grab the spline track and just drop it onto your... And there you go. So now what we've done is to basically put the second layer or the second photo on top of our mask and now I can turn this background into a blur effect. So I'm going to go into the backgrounds and I'm going to get my filter and I'm going to go for Caussian blur. See instantly the background is now blurred. Isn't that cool? So I'm going to go up to here and I'm going to increase the blur a bit to really get the background out of the focus, concentrate on the guy in the middle and I'm going to go up in here to my interpolation and I might put a linear on here All right, because I want it to move as the time goes on and bring them back into focus there you go looks good let's go to the last keyframe in the blur track uh, make sure it's all the way down to zero and I'm going to put a hold on that let's just have a look at this and see how that looks very nice. So we've got it all blurred out and then as it comes in the focus as the time moves on. So it's very simple to do. Now now in the beginning, in the preview, you saw this guy basically zooming in and out. So how did I do that? Well, very simple, my friends. Very, very simple. Let's uh what we basically need to do to do wow, I sound like an Australian there. What we basically need to do is create a container for the blur uh for the mask and the first picture. So let's just go in here. Make sure you highlight. Let's just rename this. Just press enter and just call it people. Okay, so that way it's easier for you to follow. Highlight your people track and we're going to turn this into a container. 
container is Boris's way of saying, I want you to group these layers into one folder. So I'll go into track, go to th add or th uh, 3D container. So here is now everything that I have before built neatly into a container. And I can rename that as well. I might do this people group. All right, so that keeps it nice and tidy. And now if I want to, let's add G. I can then uh, bring this photo right to the front, press apply. And let's see what uh, our final project looks like. So there you go, he's uh, panning out. And the background is now focusing back into a nice good quality. One more time. And there you have it. Obviously, I could probably do better with the uh, spline tool and trace him out. Kind of his head looks kind of funky here. But uh, this is a tutorial. Obviously, if you're going to do it, you're going to spend a hell of a lot more time on it than I have just done do to make this tutorial. <laughs> All right. As always, thanks for watching.